We know now that in the early years of the 20th century, this world was being watched closely by intelligences greater than man's, and yet as mortal as his own. We know now that as human beings... In 1938, Orson Welles' radio broadcast of The War of the Worlds, a book written by H.G. Wells, shocked America. It tells the story of aliens invading the planet Earth. After the radio broadcast was over, the American people was in panic, thinking that they will be invaded by creatures from another world. Aliens with one intent, and that is to, to destroy the Earth. Since then, there has been thousands of UFO sightings from all over the world. People have claimed that they have seen flying saucers, strange objects flying through the sky. Many believe that they are aliens visiting the Earth for some otherworldly purpose. Governments and militaries from all over the world have investigated this phenomenon. This documentary is about the way an investigation would be carried out. The first point with any investigation is obviously to collect as much information about the sighting as, as possible. So interview the witness and get all the details um, about the exact date and time of the incident, uh, the location and uh, any description that, that you can get. And clearly if there's a photo or a video you need to get hold of, of that. Then the, the second phase of the investigation is really performing a series of checks trying to tie in the location and description of the UFO with something that you know about. So you would, for example, check flight paths, uh, weather balloon launches, uh, astronomical data such as uh, satellites uh, and re-entry into the Earth's atmosphere of debris, that sort of thing. And uh, again, another critical part of an investigation is that you bring in uh, various specialists and you say, for example, uh, please uh, check with the um, uh, experts and see if anything was picked up on radar. So those are the sorts of uh, stages of an investigation. And after you've done that, 95% um, of UFOs uh, turn out to have a conventional explanation and, and they're just misidentifications of something fairly ordinary. I'm a complete skeptic about uh, alien visitors. I think there's UFOs, in the true sense of the word, un unidentified flying objects. I think there are flying objects we have not identified. That doesn't mean they're from another world. Many astronomers are quite sceptical about UFOs. That said, when I was doing that job at the Ministry of Defence, I routinely would check with the Royal Observatory Greenwich, for example, to see if there was an astronomical uh, explanation. There are organisations like SETI, the Search for Extraterrestrial Intelligence, that scan the sky using massive radio dishes, like in Arecibo in Ch uh, Chile, I think it is. Um, and uh, they scan the sky looking for the radio signals from alien, uh, culture, uh, alien societies. And so they're looking for the signal in a similar way that we give off a signal on our radio emissions. They're looking for signals uh, from them. And they look for millions of different wavelengths, scan millions of different wavelengths uh, and hundreds of thousands of stars every night and they've been doing it for about 30 years um, and they've not come up with anything. I think a number of things could be done to improve investigations. One of the things uh, that, that, that I think is quite encouraging is uh, increasingly people are carrying mobile phones which have the capability to take uh, photographs and videos and as that technology uh, becomes better uh, what we should see is a higher and higher proportion of people who have seen a UFO uh, will be able to, to back up their, their testimony with a good quality uh, photo or video that, that we can analyse. Any evidence that kind of suggests that there's a UFO sort of sighting the photo is usually really bad. In fact, any evidence that we have is kind of sort of from really unsure people. Also, I think it ends up in the sort of schlocky press, like the photo you showed me earlier about the uh, UFO by the London Eye. Um, it's in the sun. Like, so it's not going to be taken seriously. I mean, I think there has to be other life out there. 
but whether they've developed is another question. I mean, also, the photos that we end up seeing with UFOs is so easily manipulated. Um, we have easy access to things like Photoshop. Um, and there's even a free program, GIMP, that does the sort of same manipulation things that Photoshop does. So I think that you always have to question what you're seeing. And we know, we know that anyway, because any magazine cover that we're looking at of a beautiful woman who has got no blemishes, like we know isn't real because it's been cleaned up in Photoshop. So for someone just to throw a spaceship by the London Eye, I don't think is implausible. There are some UFO sightings where uh, some sort of meteorological phenomenon um, actually turns out to be the solution. One of the uh, popular ones, though not in the United Kingdom because it's very rare, is a particular kind of cloud called a lenticular cloud, uh, which under some circumstances can, can look like a, a, a solid uh, disc-shaped object. Um, but generally speaking, meteorological explanations are quite unusual. The most popular um, uh, things that are mistaken for something more exotic are, are actually aircraft lights and uh, meteors and indeed bright stars and planets in the night sky. Iridium satellites are quite a common mistake in identification uh, for alien spacecraft. Uh, there's about 66 of them orbiting the Earth, and they're, they're called in a constellation. There's like a, a network of them. They're used for satellite phone technology, for like, like um, weather satellites and all. They just orbit and reflect the signals back down and whatever. And uh, they tumble in a, a predictable way. And you can predict their um, tumbles, and you can predict where the flashes of light from the sun will reflect off the surface as it tumbles. So if you're on, say, in London, you can look up on a website called Heavens Above, which is a great website, and uh, they will tell you what time and where to look in the sky, and you will see a flash in the sky, bright flash, like as bright as Venus sometimes. I think the methodology of an investigation hasn't actually changed much um, between, say, the 50s and, and the present day. To give one example, um, early uh, this, this year I was contacted by The Sun about uh, a UFO incident where uh, some people thought that a UFO might have collided with a wind turbine. Some people had seen lights in the sky, uh, a number of people had been woke up, woken up at four in the morning by a loud explosion and then uh, they found some damage to the blades on, on one of these turbines as if something had caught it a glancing blow and, and so the Sun um, consulted with me about the sorts of things that uh, should be done in the course of, of an investigation and for example um, I suggested searching the site with a metal detector to see if there was anything. The Ministry of Defence uh, has recently begun a program of declassifying and releasing its archive of, of files. As for the uh, five percent or so that defy explanation, I'm open-minded uh, about, about the explanation. I don't actually know what these, these things are. I can't rule out, of course, some of the more exotic theories uh, doing the rounds about these, these things, but, but the bottom line is I don't know. Having said that, uh, another point that I think is important about uh, the, the UFOs is, is whatever these things turn out to be, I think they should be studied uh, properly by government, uh, the military and the scientific community because there are, it seems to me, some important defence, national security and even air safety issues involved. There have been, for example, a number of near misses between UFOs and uh, aircraft. In our galaxy alone, there's 400 billion stars. About 30% of them are like the sun. So they have the potential for rocky planets with liquid water. And our galaxy is not special. There are billions and billions of galaxies out there. And they're all roughly the same size. Hundreds of billions of stars with roughly the same percentage of sun-like stars. And so you can, you, it would be very unusual. It would be statistically highly improbable if there wasn't life. Get across an immense ethereal gulf minds that are to our minds, and ours that are the beasts in the jungle, intellects vast, cool and unsympathetic, regarded this earth with envious eyes and slowly and surely drew their plans again against us.